just wonder if, if you can explain a bit more about what your group of, of scholars are doing. And I've read on your website about um, the Islamic Rule of Law Index that you're that you've discussed and you are developing. But but can you explain that a bit more? Certainly, the, the project uh, consisted of of three phases. Uh, the first phase was to get a working group of scholars representing uh, different schools of law, all the schools of law of Islam, uh, both Sunni and Shia. Uh, and we got scholars who were from different countries of the Muslim world, representing both the, uh, the, the Sunni world, countries like Egypt, like Morocco, uh, like uh, other countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, India, Pakistan, uh, as well as Iran, Lebanon. So we represented both the Sunni world, the Shia world, both the Arab uh, Shia, the Iranian Shia. So we had a full cross-section. And we tried to explore the possibility of, uh, of consensus on what the term Islamic State in the modern time should mean or could mean in a manner that maintained the continuity or, or what one of our scholars called the, the historicity of Islamic legal thought. Uh, and this itself was a, a project which took us several sessions uh, over, over a few years till we attained what I call degrees of consensus and where, uh, when they, where they agreed and where they differed. So we were able to develop a document which would be uh, a, um, uh, the ideal definition from, a, from an Islamic uh, legal point of view, what the term Islamic State in the modern time would mean. Uh, phase two would then be to develop a methodology by which we could measure uh, this definition towards the uh, objective, which is phase three, of, uh, of rating countries by how well they comply with such a definition. That is the description of the project. Uh, there had to be some back and forth and some iteration. Uh, the most difficult part was developing the methodology on how to measure this definition. Uh, and this is what we go to in, in the work in the book, which will be published around the beginning of the year. Hopefully, if we could even advance it, it will be much better. There's very strong interest in this in this uh, product. And then, of course, the index, which is what people often look for, but is the most easily criticized of, of things. Uh, just recently, someone did an index which they declared that Ireland was the most Islamic state uh, because of you know its compliance with certain certain uh, criteria. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, from, a, from an intellectual and academic point of view, uh, the most difficult stage and the, and the new stage, in fact, which is breaking new ground, new academic ground, is the attempt to build a method that would be consistent both with Islamic jurisprudence, but also consistent with the science of measurement, which is something I had to really, I had a, a steep learning curve in. These days, when... Um you know, with travel, internet, modern communications, when we're all in much closer contact and there's a lot of movement of people and ideas and we have international laws that are not based on Islam, can Islamic law and Islamic values, or well, how does that sit comfortably with notions of a secular state and secular law? Like how, how, how can all that sit together? Well, they sit together very well indeed. I th uh, the problem with language is that we use words and language have connotations which uh, to our minds uh, mean certain things. Uh, in the Muslim world especially, the world secular has come to mean anti-religion and anti-Islam. And this has to do with the experience of many Muslim societies with regimes and with uh, when religion was uh, was considered passé, when religion was considered uh, regressive, uh, and and this is one reason for it. But if we interpret secular in the way that Americans interpret it, and America is a very religious society, uh, which means that the coercive powers of the state may not be used to favor one religion or, or more importantly, 
to obstruct or to um, to oppress uh, any one religion, uh, then this this particular ideal, uh, this particular idea, is very much consistent with the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet, although it certainly is not practiced in every single Muslim majority country today. Uh, so uh, my personal feeling, and the feeling of many uh, many uh, modern Muslim scholars, is that in fact many uh, Western societies today uh, have adopted uh, principles of of our of our faith, uh, because these principles are universal principles that everybody wants. Uh, you know our our uh, our universal values. Of, of uh, and the right to life, the right to uh, a family, uh, the right to property, uh, the right to pursue our beliefs the way we want to. These are all things which are very explicitly uh, mentioned in the Quran, in the teachings of the Prophet. And this was why the earliest Muslim societies were, were successful and they were welcomed by uh, people of other faith traditions. Because the Muslims, uh, the earliest Muslim rulers ensured uh, the freedom of various uh, religious societies to practice their religion under their rule. It's only in the last century, really, that we have seen the dominance of, a, of an interpretation uh, of, of Islam that has uh, been oppressive to, uh, to uh, other faith traditions. So you're saying, and, and this will really be the final thing, you're, you're saying that some Western countries may be more Islamic than, um, uh, you know, Muslim majority or, 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 or um, Muslim countries. Yeah, let me give you an analogy. If you define Christianity by love, hope and charity, and if you say a Christian state is a state where we find the highest degree of love, the highest degree of hope, and the highest degree of charity, then the most Christian state will be, the, the, the one where we find the highest ratings to that will be the most Christian states, sitting with a small c rather than a capital C. And it's in that sense that many Muslims use the word Islamic, because certainly they're not Muslim states in the sense that the population practices the faith of Islam in, 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 the, in the liturgical sense or the parochial sense of the meaning of the word. But in terms of the values, that is certainly the case. In fact, this, there's a famous saying by uh, the chief mufti of Egypt, who was also Sheikh al-Azhar uh, uh, after that, uh, back who died in 1905. He went to Paris, to France, uh, you know, in the late 19th century. And he came back and said something very famous. He said, I went to France. In France, I saw Islam, but no Muslims. I came back to Egypt, his home country, and said, I see Muslims, but no Islam. It's in that sense that we're using the word an Islamic state and how to define that. And this is one of the ways in which I think it's important for us to, to look at things, not in the sense of the liturgical meaning of the term only, but also in terms of the social dimensions of what our faith traditions command us to do.